Hello everyone. Hope this is working. I didn't do this in a long time. I put a motor in this beauty here. Just gonna check if my stream's working. All right. Looks like it's working. Let me close this other window out. All right, I got this beauty here. I'm going to put a new motor in it. Because the stock one was all right, it just uh, I wanted it a little faster. I don't know if this is the best view for you guys. Let me see the camera here. I ain't gonna be in. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but let me see if I can move it. Better down. Oh well, what are you gonna do? show you what I got here got one of these 21 turn it's like 15 bucks I got it on Amazon I, I put one of these in my Hornet and it worked really good so I figure I try one in here I got a Robinson racing pinion gear I have to put it all in and see how it goes Team associated Loctite works pretty good. This one here, Just put a little dab on that beauty. Anyone in the chat? I know I just popped this on, so probably no one's going to be watching. They say to put this uh, pinion gear, I think it's 13 millimeters away from the motor. So I kind of eye it up. Kind of remember how it's got to go on. Can't quite do that. Let's see. Let's put it in. Just do a little, little bit more down. What's that? See that? 
just a little hammer. Looks like it. Let's tighten it up. I was going to put the camera just facing over the top of me, but I didn't know if you could see it. Looks like you can't see too good in this angle, but. What are you going to do? I tried. This got this three-way, uh, like a diff. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Right there, you see the bevel gear on the spur? That has a ball diff built in, so it's a three-way splitter. Actually works pretty good when I ran it. chat anyhow it'll be the lone build <laughs> all right we got the motor I gotta look at the instructions again because I just built this and I'm not too familiar with it all right we need a washer Screw another one of these little screws here. Screw it in. But first, paint brush here. The motor. What I do is seal off all the openings on the gearbox and stuff. So no dirt gets in it. I even put a little bit around this plate here. Just a little tacky grease. And this seals out. If you get anything in there. And then you also want to put some uh, thread lock on this. What I do is I get like a little piece of wire and I put a little dot on here. Like that, a little dab. And I just stick it in the threads on whatever you're going to do it and swirl it around like that. This goes in like this, and this top screw with the washer goes in. loose because you have to adjust the mesh. Now this one goes in the bottom here.
Now you gotta adjust your mesh here. Loosen this bottom one a little bit. The way I do my meshes, I spin the uh, spur gear and see which parts at around the high spot that scrapes the pinion when it's far away. And then I mesh it to the high spot that's at around. That way you get a better mesh. right there so I'm gonna mesh it to there The shot kind of should have took them off. You can use like a piece of paper also. in between the gears I always check it twice because sometimes when you tighten it down it moves want you spinning around you want a little rock in between the gears the pinion and the uh, spur the bolt fall in there nice mesh good oh sorry i didn't look at the <laughs> the chat all of a sudden i looked and there was people in it <laughs> thanks for showing up guys i can't really type i got that anti-wear and sticky grease i got on my hand so hi to everyone thanks for coming in i'm putting a 21 turn in this one here lid to my thread lock here all right now what I do I gotta put some grease on this because I got a new pinion gear I'll see if I can show you this here you see that that's the gears 
what I do is I get grease and go around all the seals, like where the top piece of the gearbox goes on, so it seals out any dirt from coming in there, like dust and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do now. I use my grease here. I have the Z-Op grease. It's real tacky, the heavy one. And I just go around it with like a paintbrush. What's up, everyone? I just use like a paintbrush. See how I dab it on like that? And if you go around the top cover... Just, I just make a sloppy seal. Sounds funny, but it doesn't matter if it squeezes out. You could always wipe it off. I do this on all my RCs because a lot of them. Even the newer ones, like the old Tamayas, you could take in the sand, like the grasshoppers and hornets and all them old ones, they were like made for it. The newer ones get a lot of stuff in the gearboxes, do little holes and seams and stuff. So I always do this, especially on the crawlers. I'll try to look at this chat while I'm doing it. Hello everyone, RC Trail Cats, RC Recreation, Rex RC. Who else is in here? Ian Burnett, is it? And uh, Andy, Ogear RC. Thanks for stopping in. I didn't do one of these lives in a long time. <laughs> Even go around the top a little bit of the the spot over here, the gearbox. What do I do? Better safe than sorry. Once sand gets in them, you don't want that. All right. Now, I'm going to put my thinner grease one here. I got a thinner velocity. I'm going to put that on the pinion gear. Oh, I could just put some on the spur in a little bit. It'll get on there. Good thing about my grease is actually you could mix them both and make them as thick as you want. Like you could thin out the thicker one if you have uh, both of them. And I'll just turn this by hand. Get it on the pinion gear. Rex RCs. What's he saying? I greased my CCO1 and CCO2 transmission case. Like, yep, yeah, it's the best thing you could do. Any Mog RC, I'm thinking of buying one. Any good powder? Uh, I don't know what you're asking. Unless you meant power. All right, that's all lubed up. Now I gotta put this back together. I gotta look at the instructions, like I said, because I just built this one here. All right, these beauties right here. Plop this in place. Let me 
that. Let me check if everything's working. It's got that splitter so it's hard to turn. It's working. Got my stupid box here. Weird gearbox, this one here. There it is. Well, it's working, I could tell. Yeah. Well, the grease squeezed out around it. That's a good sign. Three screws hold this plate on. They make a nice little cutout in the spoiler here so you could get the third one in there and take it out if you need to. This buggy's cool. Has a longer wheelbase than the normal 110 scale ones. It actually feels a lot bigger because of that when you're driving it, actually holding it in your hand. It's like longer. I think it's like a half inch longer to wheelbase on it. It's cool. Hey, the hooligans in the house. I'm trying to do this so you can see, but I'd normally grab this in my hand. <laughs> And tighten up these bolt uh, screws here. All right, now if you get grease coming out, you can wipe it off. that seal we made there's one spot I can't reach I have to get the screwdriver in there with a paper towel and you just push it across and it comes out like I just did there do that on the other side Andy Ma Garcia, how much are they to buy? I need one as I think this is like three hundred thirty dollars. This kit, but it comes with full ball bearings except for uh, six of them, little ones. You could they give you like uh, metal bushings. You could uh, put the ball bearings in. That's what I did with mine. Haha. <laughs> The hooligan said he was about to split wood and he saw what I was on. Beauty! <laughs> Filthy cow, what's up? Bobber, who altered our seeds in the house? Filthy Girl says, check out his community post for the Steve OD 313 to my build off. Gurus RC, what's up? I hope this 21 turn gives us a little more spark. Let's see the 21 turn there. Everything's working. Did the job right. 
this is uh one of the open end bell motors and it's kind of weird with the wires i hope it fits in here because the wires on the other motor were like in the center and you had to bend them on a standard 540. I hate when you do the grease on the RCs and it gets your hands all slimy up. Especially mine, it's like real tacky, the heavy one, the grease I got here. It's messy. Actually, I got some Windex here, so do the old clean the hands with the Windex trick. This one came out neat with the body the way I did it. You've probably seen it in my video already, but. I scuffed it up already. You could see the scratches. Right on the windshield. I was so mad. I flipped it and a rock hit right here. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. That got scuffed up. And then this uh I'm gonna have the running video probably Thursday. I gotta do the video and put it up. I kinked the rear spoiler here. I don't know if these guys could see it, but it was kinked. I kind of bent it back. And my wheels, remember I said I used the Krylon and I knew it was going to flake off? Don't ever use Krylon paint on the plastic stuff. It all flaked right off. Check that out. I think this side's worse. Yeah. I could easily strip these and make them white or something. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it because I bash them anyway. It still looks good when there's orange on it. Yeah, these guys in Canada have to pay a lot more. I don't know why it's so much more. In some kits, it's crazy much more money there, but all right, what am I up to now? I gotta look at the instructions because, like I said, I just built this thing. I gotta put this top piece on here, and actually, in the steering bell crank, I actually want to put a little bead of grease around this top plate here because this seals off this little end of the gearbox too. So I put a little seal on that. Could always wipe off the excess. This way no dirt could get in that beauty. Just like that. Little seal. Save your gears. How many times I ran them in the past and I didn't do that when I was younger and I opened the gearbox and it was like filled with sand in there all gritty. You don't want that. This is a weird bell crank. How the hell does this go here? Let's get this piece out here. There it is. Now, you gotta put these wires up through here. These ones a mess. <laughs> no one likes the wires. All right, now this is weird too. This kind of pops in. It's funny. There it is. Let's see. Oh, I got to take out. Forgot this one here. You got to take out this piece every time this, this long Allen screw because you got to bolt it through to hold this piece on. So I got to do that. Let me get my Allen. I think it's this one. I may be wrong. Yep, it ain't that one. Nope, the blue one. Maybe it ain't the blue one. There it is. I'm 
trying to look at the chat, but it's kind of hard when I'm doing this. All right. So that's on. Everything's through. The wires are through. So I remember this got to go on all these screws. How do I pull that down? We got one, two, three, four, five, six screws. We got five three by twelve millimeters and one three by eight millimeter. So there should be a small one. These big ones here. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Got it. Where's my screwdriver? All right, I remember the small one goes right there. Just leave that loose. Let me see what everyone's doing here. Hi from Italy, Francesco Venezia. I don't know how to say it, but hi, thanks for stopping in. If I missed anyone, thanks for coming in. There's a lot of screws on this one. Hey, Dad's in the house. This is a newer ESC than the older ones I used to run 20 turn motors on. I hope this newer one could still handle them. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Might get the old Tamiya smoking coming out from that beauty. You see me go in reverse with the screwdriver when when you first put these together you make like uh, thread marks in the plastic they tap into and always when you go to put your screws back in go in reverse they'll pop in the same threads and they'll go in easy otherwise if you just put them in they'll re-thread again and you'll have double threads in the plastic and you make it weak so it'll strip out like see I just go see that pop that means it just went in the same thread. So that's what I do. I'm going to have to take this off the bench and hold it. These are long screws. They go in pretty far. Filthy cow, when is the Tamaya build date? God, I should have used my electric tool for this. put this re rear trailing a arm back on just to get the dog bone in here it goes right in there with this ball you gotta make sure though when you put it back in you got the dog bone in there and then they give you this 
lock nut type thing, but I'm going to put a little thread lock in there because I don't trust it. Don't thread too far. I'm going to use the method, like I said before, where I just put it on a piece of wire. I can find my wire. Where the hell did I put it? I'll have to use this one here. I get like a little piece of wire like this. And I just put it in the threads on the bolt. So if it's up against plastic, usually if you just put it on the threads and you screw it in, it'll get on this ABS plastic and then it'll just start cracking. So I uh, put a little dab on here. Just like that. And I go in the nut and I just put some inside it like this. So it won't get on the plastic. That way you won't have to worry about your plastic cracking over time. Filthy Kill says November 1st, December 15th. I already built up my Blitzer Beetle. I got all the footage, so I'll just I'm gonna save that probably for the build. Need a Tamaya T wrench. That's what I need. Let me get one here. Whoa. Almost fell. Unless you don't want to tighten up too hard. Thread lock will hold it. And that's it for that. Now I got to put on the shocks and the bell crank and connect the motor up. Rex RC says, I just got an electric screwdriver. Wrist and forearms are starting to cramp. Yeah. I got one too, an old one that's good. They don't make it anymore. I got this one here. This is Black and Decker. And the handle, oh, I'm looking at the wrong one here. This one, you can bend like that. And it's good. It has a clutch from zero. So it goes up to almost locked, like, what is it, 24? So if you put it on like one, that's what I usually do. I put it on one and it and it bottoms out and starts clicking. And then I always retighten them a little hair more with a screwdriver. All right. What was I going to do now again? The bell crank. All right. Things on. Yeah. I need this. Yeah, man, just did a boo boo. Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> what I did. I didn't have one more screw in this gearbox on the side. I missed. That's what I did wrong. Didn't do a boo boo. Had to put one more screw in this gearbox on the side. I missed it. RC Nitro Flux, what's up? Hmm. 
Where the hell did I put those screws? little bushings here and these long screws go in they give you a carbon fiber uh, crank things look at that see hard to see but it's carbon fiber is pretty cool gonna be fun All right, screwdriver. I like the paint you did on. Thanks. I had to do something different. It's, it's all you see is the same ones. If you search on YouTube, <laughs> all you see is uh, stickered up black ones with the same thing. I got tired of seeing them. <laughs> I knew it was going to come out pretty good because a long time ago on my twin hammers, you know how they came with the, everyone had that green body? That's the method I did on my twin hammers. I have a video of how to do it a long time ago with the Dremel. And I made mine look different because I was tired of seeing everyone's twin hammers, always the green. No, it's just the flat piece. You see it? It's just like a flat plate with the uh has the cranks. You see how it works. It's got the little bit of slop in it, like the Tamaya slop. But it's not too bad. The diffs are smooth on this one. I put the anti-wear grease on them, they feel really good. What I like about this one is they used, uh, for the uh, A-arms, they used that better, like, flexible material plastic that don't break, like the, like, kind of like the horn it has for the front bumper, kind of that type on the rear here. Because if they would have used the regular ABS, then it probably would have ripped right off. Hey, RC Mask Mask is in the house. What's up? Thanks for stopping in. The hooligan says his first to my kit was a black foot. <laughs> and his brother got jealous and bought the monster beetle. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, I think my first one was. Which one was it? I forgot. So I think, oh yeah, it was the Hornet. It was my first one. Brad Kelman's in the house. 
<laughs> he says he'll put a <laughs> fast brushless in it. I don't want to destroy it, Brad. We'll see how it goes with this 21 turn. I don't know. I put an 18 tooth in it, though, the pinion gear. It came with a 21 tooth pinion gear, but I'm telling you, I was riding it like on dirt and low grass, so it's kind of hard for it to go. But the motor got so hot when I touched it when I was done. I was like, oh, man. It wasn't. I checked the brush, brushes in the com, and when they say they get too, too hot, it gets purple. It wasn't purple, but it was too hot for my liking. So that's why I got the 21 turn, and I put a, a 18 tooth. I figure it adds more RPM, so maybe it'll balance out. If I get a little faster than stock and it runs cool, that's what I want. Filthy car, see, I like the Shinmai Tamaya kits. Yeah, you could probably. They already got washers on it. It's just loose the way they made it. I don't... You probably could put a real thin, thin thing on there, like a piece of, uh... you know, the Lexan you get in the package if you make your own washer, like a real, real super thin one. You probably could do that, but it's not bad. There's a lot worse one of Tamai as I've seen out there. <laughs> Tamai <a> slop. <laughs> yeah, filthy co. I think like I like in the Tamai is like 3,000 kV to 3,300. It's nice. Once you start putting, like, guys put, like, them 40-something K KVs, I see, like, 57. That's way too much for one of these things. You're going to tap something that's going to shatter. Brad Kilmer said, I didn't know this was a live chat. That's why I'm also putting a 40. Oh, my God. 4600 in a super hot shot them a arms are so brittle brad if you tap something they just blow apart and then the steering knuckles are that red plastic is abs they'll rip right off that's why i don't do it with mine i leave mine with the stock motor and make them a little faster i learned my lesson it's not worth it sure it goes fast but once you make a little mistake then you have to buy the whole parts trees and they're a rip off. And you got to keep doing that after a while. You get tired of it. Which batteries fit? I use a small uh, Venom LiPo. It's a soft case one. But on, on uh, Amazon, there's these, uh, I forgot the name of them. If, if, who's asking here? <laughs> Rex RCs, if you contact me, I'll give you a link to Amazon. There's these batteries. Everyone gets them for the Tamaya cars. They're shaped like the nickel metal hydrate packs. They're 35 bucks for two of them. They're 4,000 milliamp 50C lipos, 2S. And the guys say they fit almost everything, even the Wild Willy that has the small uh, compartment in the back. Brad says they had the ball bearing steering. That's cool. Guy and Moose's RC Adventure. What's up? Thanks for stopping in. Hi, I appreciate you coming in. Rex RC saved the speed for cars. Yeah, doing it with these old Tamayas is like. Uh, crazy there's like you you'll know the difference when you own a lot of rcs and you own these and you own like lossy associated armas and traxxas and stuff you could do stuff with those that you can't do with these they don't drive like these they don't give you a fun of these 
those RCs. These Tamais have like character. Each one's kind of different. That's why I like them. They're fun. Even if they're slower, they don't work right. Like the suspension or anything. Like on the Grasshopper, it's just a fun RC. But when you make them fast, you hit something with these. Oh my God, they're, they're ABS plastic. Most of them have a lot of plastic and they just shatter. Brad says he believes the plastic is better on this one. And I've seen 4,000s on tap. Yeah, I've seen guys put uh, seven, seven, uh, 70, uh, whatever, uh, 1,000 KV, uh, 7,000 KVs in them. Yeah, they work, but when they crash them, like with anything, if you ride your real car and you tap someone in the rear at five miles an hour, not a lot of stuff happens, but if you crash your real car into a rear of another one at 50 miles an hour, guess what? It gets totaled. You could do it, but I'm telling you, the gear train in these and the uh, plastics, they're not good for it. My own experience, I had lots of them. I know I learned my lesson. Yeah, like I said, Filthy Co., you could do it, but they ain't going to be strong like like another like new model, like an armor or a Traxxas Slash or something will handle it so much better. And if you do the same, like say if you jump, say you have like a 4,700 KV in this, and you jump it at full speed on a ramp and it goes like 30 foot and then hits into the ground, this thing's probably going to break. Whereas if you do it with like a Slash or an armor, it probably won't break. <laughs> Rex RC says, I've been on a binge enjoying old Tamiya's. Just played with the lunchbox for the first time. It's a blast. I felt like a kid. I can't seem to love the Hornet. It's terrible. You want to know why? The, the lunchbox is real the same. It's terrible just like it. But it's because it has the soft big tires. It makes the back more calm. It don't bounce as much. The Hornet. The only way you could get the Hornet to work a little bit better is if you look at my mods with the fishing string mod. That's the best mod you could do to any of these hoppers. I tried everything. And also the front springs. Then if you get the Amp Pro adapters, I, I made them and I had him copy them and make them on his site, Amp Pro Engineering, at a good plastic. He made them and you could buy them. You could adapt the... Uh, Kyosho uh, Scorpion wheels and the nice tires they have were softer, a lot softer with the foam. So the tires help absorb a lot of them imperfections. It makes the hoppers work a little better than with the stock tires. I have a video on my channel of those tires on a I think I have them on my uh, grasshopper, and I also have a video showing what they are if you want to look for it. Yeah, Canada gets ripped off for the kits. RC Nitro Flux, you get in the USA one. I got the Fox already. I do like it, but. I don't have the cash to spend on that thing. That thing's, I think it's expensive, ain't it? It's like, what is it, 600? I just bought, last one I bought was the LMT. So I got like the LMT, I got the Fox, I got two Clod Busters. I got a lot of monster trucks. I don't really don't need it. It is nice, but, but I don't have the funds for that beauty. The Nitro one's kind of cool with the three speed. Brad Kilman says, I love my heart. Yeah, I love the Hornet, too. That's one of the beauties. It 
So, Brad, did you finish up that gearbox from last night? I was watching a little bit. I just didn't type nothing. All right, where am I up to, guys? I got to hook this motor on. Uncle Bob's RC, good morning. Thanks for stopping in. Guy on a moose RC event. The USA one, it does look mean. Uh, Tony CCX RC, my buddy over there, he unboxed it and he put it next to the LMT. And the LMT usually looks like tough, like it looks like mean and big and like a monster. I have to say, I even commented, I said, the USA one makes the LMT look kind of wimpy. <laughs> but for durability, I still have to say, I think the LMT is going to be better. Because my Fox is pretty good. The axles, the chassis could bend sometimes. I think I bent mine when I first got it. You could bend it back easy, though. Guys usually, sometimes they put double plates on. Now I have the one aluminum. They put two on there with longer screws to make it stronger. But the USA one, they, they said they beefed up the axle. So now I'm, I'm, I even asked someone about that. I wonder what they did to the axles. They say they beefed them up. Oh, you're missing one of them little metal shims they that they shim the motor. Can't you use one less and use a different pinion gear instead if you want? Like a larger pinion. That is a weird way they do that on the with the hot shot though, with the metal uh spacers by the pinion gear. All right, that's all on. Now I gotta hook these shocks back on. Which eyelet were you? I think they were in the lower one. This one actually has adjustments for the shock on the back. You could actually put it up straighter if you want to. But it's softer when it's down in the position they make you put it. It's tight working on this when you don't take off the wing. Oh, oh this ain't a this is a regular Phillips head. I really should take off this wing, but this is one you have to use your finger to get it on. I think I got a NIM pack here. I think I could give it a blip and see if it even working good. I know how fast it went stock. I GPSed it, so I know if I got an improvement or if I have to use a different pinion gear at least. I put an 18 in it, like I said, but. Oh. Uh, I 
thought you took one of them out. Oh, they, they make you just put one on the top and two on the bottom like that. You always got to use them all. You're right. I forgot. I didn't build mine in a long time. Sure it didn't fall on the floor? Use a magnet on something and go around like this in the carpet. And, it, and if it fell on the floor, you'll find it. If you use one of them strong needle type magnets or a big magnet. Yeah, filthy coat of plasma edge looks pretty cool. I think they had like a chrome pinkish one and a chrome blue one. That chrome blue one looked awesome. All right, that looks like it. I'm going to see if this works. I got to get a NIM pack really quick. Where's my radio? Hope it don't interfere with nothing. so many models on this thing. FMS Suzuki Jimny. No, I don't got one of those. Brad's going to use the 13 tooth. Yeah, if you're going to put that high KV motor in there, Brad, I'd put the lowest pinion you could put in there all right this is on let me turn this on let me see if it's working oh we got power Looks like it's working. I don't know how fast it'll be. Like I said, I'll have to test it out. I probably might be able to go a little bigger on the pinion gear because I put an 18 in there. Because I always like to start low and check temperatures and stuff. And if it happens to feel good, I leave it. If, if I need more speed, if it's cold, cold the motor, I'll put like maybe a 19 or 20 in there. But looks like it's working. Completed. I have to GPS this beauty and see what it does. Uncle Bob's RC. It's pretty cool. I usually have, like I said, I have like a hot shot. And I have, uh, what's it called, the uh, super shot. Well, they call it the super hot shot now. And they're nice, but this thing's, like, different. It's, like, more higher quality, like, the way they built it. And uh, 
its wheelbase is longer, which is neat. It's like probably a half inch almost longer. So this looks really much bigger than them standard one tent uh, Tamayas. Yeah, you could probably get this. I think it's like 340 bucks. And I think uh pop shop and them or well i forgot what they are They're like two something ain't they now almost 300 270. i was gonna say uh someone was at brad someone was asking about the batteries that fit the tamayas and i told them about the ones that I showed you. Um, I wanted to ask you if uh, you tried them and all your Tamayas, how they fit, if they fit them all. FRA, hi, how you doing? I'm going to have the run video tomorrow, Thursday. It's going to be up. I'm, I'm working on it now. I took it out and bashed it. So I'll have the running video tomorrow. This one has, look at this. I want to show you guys. Look at this uh, Vanquish. It has a lot of ground clearance. Look, my hand could almost fit under it for a buggy. It's really high. It's actually nice. You could take it off road. Like I took it when I tested, I took it off road and like it was like dead grass with stalks and all dirt and stuff and acorns and it it worked good and it didn't even bottom out hardly, only a little little bit because it's like really high the ground clearance. I don't know if you see how high it is if I put like this. If you see that, this is bending, but <laughs> I can't hold it straight. But it's high. <laughs> Go test it live. <laughs> uh, there's a you'll see the video tomorrow. I kind of flipped it a few times and scuffed it and bent the spoiler and stuff. <laughs> I always say, oh, I'm just going to ride it nice and easy. And I always end up coming back with something. Uh, oh, I did it. I pushed it too hard. I got it all bent and scratched and this and that. Yeah, it's really nice. Put the body on real quick. I actually got to zip tie these uh, wires again because I refixed it. But anyhow, I'll do that later. I put a piece of. It's weird this one here. I put these foam rings on the body posts because without them. The body, the way they have it on, it's like you have to smoosh it down now, and I put a rubber O-ring over the tops, then I put the pin. If you don't, you just leave it the way they say, it rocks like this, like crazy, and makes that rattle noise. It actually goes like this. It's kind of weird why they did it like that. So when I put mine on, I use these uh, little O-rings, like for the shocks. Well, these are actually rubber ones that Tamaya uses, not for the shocks, like for like the hornets and stuff. And I put one of them rubber O-rings pressed over first, like that. And then I put the body on. 
with that foam under there. And you'll see the difference. Now when it's on, you see it don't it don't move. When you don't put that stuff on it, it just teeter tires. It makes noise and rattles like crazy. But there she is. It's nice. That's why I scuffed the window and you can't see the guy anymore. You can see his face a little bit. You got the reflection. I scuffed it right on the windshield. <laughs> my luck flipped i always hit every time i bring my rc cars out where i ride all different spots there always happens to be a lot of rocks spread all over and i'll be riding i'll just nail one and it'll flip brad kellen you use the same containers they are great yeah these little containers from like uh, a lunch meat. What works good too also, I actually put like, uh, I'll show you what I do, Brad, so you don't mess anything up when you do stuff. I actually stick the number on each container. See, I got D on that one. I have, well, this one fell off the C. That way you can't mix nothing up and I just, by now, I'm so used to building these tamayas, Brad, that I could just pour all the screws in one big plate, and I and I know how to get them out. I don't even have to go with A, B like that. But it, I use separate containers with a number on them, so that way you, with a letter rather, so you could uh, dump the contents of each of those bags in there. Then you'll find it much easier when you're working. <laughs> yeah, I like the way they don't have their arms neither on a lot of them. That's funny. And also how you have to screw the screw right down into their skull to hold them onto the bodies. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah, it was a good build, this one here. Here's the diffs in it if you want if these guys want to see it. It has like little spider gears, like four of them in there. It's cool. Then here's the uh, splitter diff that the uh, pinion gear runs on from the motor. It's weird because if you put the, the buggy down like this, there's not much pressure, only like a little friction. See, the back tires won't move. So it just gives enough friction to pull the buggy through the turns and stuff. That way it makes it kind of like in between. Like a, That's why it's like a splitter. It has four sway bars. It has all the uh, CVAs you put together, which is cool. These shocks are, everyone thinks they're cheesy the way they look and stuff, but they actually work good when you fill them up like this. And you just leave the level a little lower than they show here. Uh, if you could see it. You leave the level a little lower so when you press in that plunger just a hair of oil comes out around it and then you screw the cap down no no uh, air in them at all and when you push the uh the end of the shock shaft back in they just pop out a little bit like a quarter away the like they supposed to they work really good you have to build two of them diffs That was a cool build. Brad, I already completed the monster beetle. 
I did this one in like a two days, and I did the monster beetle in two days. I was I didn't build them in such a long time that once I started them, <laughs> I was addicted. <laughs> But yeah, this is a fun buggy. It's got a real flexible front bumper. Look at that. For impacts. I'm going to clean up this mess here. Put some of this stuff away, guys. I may go out today. I think it's, I don't know if it's still raining. I may go out today and just try to GPS it just to see if it improved. I probably won't make a video of that just to see for myself. All right, guys. There she is. 21 turn equipped ready to go once again and like i said stay tuned for tomorrow you'll see the running video and you'll see how it goes and how fast it looks and how much abuse it took it's pretty neat i like it and once again it's a beauty <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to head out. Thanks for stopping in, everyone. I appreciate it, as always. And uh, leave a comment if you can. Hit that thumbs up. Helps me out. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy my running video, guys. Yeah, Brad, you need a bigger table for sure. I don't know how the hell you're building on that little thing. All right, guys, take care. Thanks for stopping in. Me and the Vanquish are out. See you later, guys. I don't know if I remember how to shut this down. <laughs> there it is. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Later.